it's day three. It's 6.12. Sun's starting to come up. Uh, I'm still a little, uh, my throat's a little raspy. I've got uh, a little bit of electrolyte water and uh, about, I don't know, seven eighths of a, another liter that I can drink on until I get to Lust Creek. Then I'm going to have to stop there for a little bit and uh, filter water. My idea is that I'm going to cook and camel up. The finger that I crushed a month or two ago is uh, super cold, super, super cold. So putting this on to kind of warm it up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to leave until 7. I haven't decided yet. I'm probably going to get bored after I get done with this. I don't have any cell service here, so I, I've already got my underquilt off. I just got to get my pack down and start loading it in, but I thought I might try to eat some beef jerky, but I don't know. I'm just not hungry. I went to the bathroom, uh, peed twice, once last night and once this morning, so I'm not dehydrated to the point where I can't pee. I just, I think a lot of it is just mental. I really do. After tonight, I said I have a 50% chance of completing the trail because after today, I don't have a ride anymore. I just got to get over this fear because I don't want this trip to be miserable. That's the whole idea. I don't want to be miserable on this trip. And if I feel like I'm thirsty all day, that's exactly what I'm going to be. I get through the night pretty well, but it's just during the day. And I don't know if it's just Lust Creek, but this, this last like five hours of my hike was so boring. <laughs> I was like, everything's the same. You're just, we you're weaving your way through a dense forest. You keep passing the same group of, you know, pine. It seems like you're passing the same group of, you know, pines over and over and over, but it's different. But man, it's just like over and over the same stuff over and over and over and over. It's like, man, I'm just, I can't wait to get out of Lust Creek Wilderness. I really, I'll be done with it today, but hopefully I start seeing new stuff. I, here's what I mean. Like I was begging for a road yesterday. <laughs> I was like, I would do anything to walk on a road, even for like a little bit. Just, just break up this monotony of this, you know. It's starting to feel like I don't know if I'm cut out to do this, which is kind of the whole point of doing a trip like this was to make that determination to see if I could. And I don't think there's anything really wrong with saying, no, I'm not cut out to do through hikes. I'm not cut out to be out on trail for weeks at a time. Yesterday's hike wasn't a problem at all. I wasn't weary or worn out or anything. Yeah, I just feel like I got to give myself a little bit more time. Definitely got to give myself some more time. I'll see what happens after Lust Creek. Okay, it's 6.34. I'm on trail heading to Lust Creek. Welcome to Lust Creek. Damn it. Shit. I'm going to have to hop up here and take my shoes off and then somehow get down there without slipping and falling. Okay. This is a little better. I don't know if I'm going to be able to walk across there, but I'll try. But I can also pull some water from here too, so that's good. And that's what I'm about to do. Okay, so my plans have slightly changed. Uh, I was gonna cook at Lust Creek, but where I had to sit and get water is not a great little spot to cook. And uh, quite frankly, after tasting this water, I'm kind of having second thoughts about, I mean, cause there's not a good flow. I mean, this is, it's flowing just because it's dammed up here a little bit, but, I don't know. I feel as though it's not that great. I bottled up two water, two liters of water regardless, and I'm going to take that to uh, Eddieville. Uh, I'm going to drink it along the way. I mean, if I need to, but I'm thinking instead of 
if they're open, I may stop in and shotgun Eddie's and eat and also get some tea there and camel up. And uh, then when I get to my drop, I'll just grab up whatever food I need, throw it in the pack. I'll probably leave my ramen bomb since I'm going to have two dehydrated meals on me at that point. Drink whatever water I can. Load up, leave whatever water behind. And uh, maybe finish off my beef jerky and all of that. But uh, I don't know. It depends on if I eat at Fast Eddie's or at Shotgun Eddie's. A lot of this has is kind of flying by the seat of my pants at this point because this... There's plenty of water, but it's like not the greatest water. So, and this is the first time I've drank Sawyer water, you know, filtered water this trip. So maybe it's just my mind getting the better of me. I don't know, but now I got to cross here and I'm going to not, I'm going to try to do it with my shoes on. It's better than Ford in there, but, uh, we'll see if I can get across with dry feet. So I'm to the other side now. I'm not entirely sure where to go. Well, campsite here. I guess I'm gonna have to look. Well, I'm here. Oh, my fingers are frozen. And uh, yeah, it sucks. Especially the finger with the die smashed. Oh, it's. Uh, it feels like it's non existent. Well, it would feel non existent if it wasn't for the pain. But yeah. Making my way slowly but surely. Ah, the wishing well. I remember that. It's been a long time, but. It kind of makes you wonder, though, about that wishing well. Hmm. That was the last time that uh, Soraya and I were here. In case I didn't mention it before, we're on the River to River Trail, and this is a 160 mile trail system that links the Ohio River to the Missouri River. It's all along southern Illinois through the Shawnee National Forest. We are, of course, are not doing the complete thing. We are only doing small sections of it. But one day, who knows, might do the whole thing. I think it's something that could probably realistically be done in 10 days. And who knows, maybe this fall I may tackle it myself. Looks a lot different. I'm kind of perplexed by this. I know it happens every once in a while, but uh, it's just weird. That's when, like, like once you get out of that, the blazes turn white and blue and nicely visible, I might add. But when you're in the wilderness areas, they all go to just brown. I mean, they look exactly like the tree. The problem as I see it is this is the blaze. You'd never know you saw it until you turn around and saw it. You know how easy it is to get off trail because just because of that? I mean, I don't know what their thought process is. It seems like there's a lot of weird politics and bureaucracy and things down there that prevent things from just being, you know, sensible. But, I don't know. It's just annoying. I really don't know why I'm videotaping all the signage. I don't know. I guess it gives me something to do. A little bit. Should be coming up to the trailhead here pretty soon. And then, boom! No more Lust Creek Wilderness. I mean, technically I've been out of the Lust Creek Wilderness for a little bit, but... No more Lust Creek. Oh. And if... Yeah, that's what I thought. It is a road. Usually I hate to see roads, but right now I'm happy to see it because it's something different. Oh boy. That Lust Creek. Lust Creek is a lot of the samey stuff. A lot of the same stuff. So there you go can't trust those uh, at mileage as far as I could throw it but yeah bada bing bada boom 
I guess I gotta go up there. So maybe I'm not out of it. Boo hoo hoo. The other side of the road, it says Eddieville's three and a quarter miles. I don't believe that, but there's the road. Yeah, actually I don't start, I don't get off trail until past the road and then it deviates off, but we'll see when I get there. More signage. North Bear Burr Trail number 473. I don't know if you can read that or not, but this is the way I'm going. Ow, there's something in my, ah, something stabbed my toe. Ouch. Okay, so here's the trailhead proper. There's a little privy, not too bad. No garbage pickup. Pack it in, pack it out. Yeah. You are here. Yeah, I did all that. <laughs> I really only have done that much so far. That much. Man, these are almost Ill illegible at this point. Ah, it says two miles to Eddieville. I doubt that. Because now I got a road walk. So uh, I guess I go that way. Potential water source. Holy jeesh. I have to mark that on my map. That's surprising. I would pull from that. That looks pretty clear. Huh. Got a group of buzzards over here. Kind of hanging around this one little area. There were three of them on the road when I got up here. And then they bolted. They're in the trees just watching. Must be something over there here they're trying to eat i'm guessing it's that <laughs> all right day three drop is over here let's see if it's still intact It appears to be. Nope. Something's been rummaging through it. Something cut it open. I'm gonna have to see. So food and water is intact. My, there was a hole ripped in the garbage bag and my clothes were all taken out of the bag. So once again, kudos to Soraya for the, bo the box idea because I've been putting all my food in this and uh, I've been putting that on there just to keep the varmints out and it worked because they went a scrounging and weren't able, wasn't able to get to my food. Okay, I'm leaving a Shotgun Eddie's. I ate there. Had a th onion rings and a horseshoe and a whole lot of tea. So, uh, luckily you can pay with card there. So I filled up and that should carry me as far as food goes for the rest of the day. So I feel pretty good. Got to sit inside for a little bit. <laughs> that was nice. And uh, I am so cameled up on tea that I've got no worries whatsoever as far as fluids go. Maybe I needed that extra caffeine too. I don't know. I guess I'm 53 miles into the trail and uh, Goreville, 103 miles. So I've got 50 miles to go to get to Goreville. And that's going to be well over, well not well over, but over three days because I'm not doing 15 miles a day. 
I'm doing more like, I don't know, I would say, I mean, so far I think I've only done 13 around there. We'll see what I do today. But uh, at some point I'm gonna have to kick it up just cause I'd like to get to Goreville by Thursday at least. That's four days out for me. And uh, if I can do that, then it should be good. The people of uh, Eddieville seem pretty friendly. Shotgun Eddies, those guys were pretty friendly too. I didn't have to worry about I just left my pack outside and went in and ate. I'm not, I'm actually pretty clean for day three of hiking, but I've been keeping up with that as well. And I haven't really been sweating like crazy like I do on the AT. Passing the Eddieville Town Hall. And on the other side, the post office. <clears throat> ah, that's my street, Washington Street. I'll be making a ride up here and getting back on trail, I'd imagine. River to River Trail, still going. Got off uh, Washington Street, <clears throat> and now I'm on this, what I, this is called the trail. I, would, I always call stuff like this fire lanes, anything that's this wide. But uh, yeah, looking good. Here we are with Double Branch Hole Ecological Area. Uh, hmm. Not sure what that is, but it is something. I always like clearing maps. Maps, map clearing is kind of fun. I don't think I'll be clearing another map. The map I'm going into is going to be the map I camp in, I imagine. I mean, this trail is a bit uh, questionable. I've stumbled quite a bit. The leaves are obstructing its true form. <laughs> so, I'm not going to be doing a lot of taping of this because I'm going to need both my trekking poles for balance. Okay, we got Petticoat going right 496B going that way. River to river going that way. Got a shelf right here down by this creek. Got some good flowing water too. It's crazy. Like I, I kind of had a feeling when I was looking at the map that these would be good areas for, well, that looks a little concerning, but I don't know. I still feel like it would be all right. Booyah. It says Eddieville's two miles back and it could be. Uh, I got a cross here. I think I'm gonna go over there and then, yeah. So, I'm gonna put this away so I have my balance. And that's either a bra or something to blind horses. I continue on. Apparently over here. Huh. Hell, they even got tractor supply company pitching in for the horse trails. What about us, I say? What about us? What about the hikers? <laughs> it is, uh, oh crap, I forgot to look. I think it was like 12.50. Pretty close to one. That's an hour and a half since I started. I'll stop at 12.30 and take a break. As soon as I can go it up a little bit more, I'm going to see if I can get some reception up there and, uh, See what's see what's what. Getting the feeling the trail is going to be like this for a few miles, so should be able to make pretty good time on this. We shall see. Ah, Jackson Hole, my favorite. I've never been there. Uh, still on this. Like I said, it's probably going to be several miles. Saw a uh, deer over here in these woods earlier, startled it a little bit, but that's about the only eventful thing that's happened. I'm hoping to clear 
what is this, map 10? Hoping to clear map 10 today, but not holding my breath. We'll see. <sighs> yeah, petticoat back there. Uh, that's the trail. That's something else. Private property. So, I go this way. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, it's like 1.15 and Cedar Grove Church Road access is a 59.5 mile marker. Close to 60. That's where I was saying I wanted to end. Why is it 60 miles? But that's an hour away. <laughs> so that's a hell of an early time to stop, you know. But what I may do is push on to uh, our Millstone Lake Dam. But that's another four miles beyond that. So that's two hours. That would be three hours from here. I guess I could just hike another hour and, you know, feel it out after that. It just gives me peace of mind because that means that in order to get to uh, uh, Goreville, it's only going to be another 43 miles from there. I'm not trying to do more than I should. And I think based on what I ate today and what I'm going to eat tomorrow morning and the amount of tea or I drank earlier, I feel like if I go all the way to Millstone, it puts me very, very close to my drop, my day four drop, which means I probably won't even get through all my water unless I just, you know, down it and then refill my bottles from there. But I was also hoping to get to Millstone and possibly use that to, you know, for the Sawyer, but. Now I'm starting to throw everything out of whack. I'll have to add up the mileage when I get to camp, but I may have done a lot of miles today. I don't know, depending on where I stop, but I'll pick it up from there. I'm anxious to get back on the trail for the first time in three days. Is this it? Cedar Grove Road Junction is one mile. Uh... Okay, I go this way. I think this might be it. I think it is. The place I was supposed to camp. Boy, I know how to pick them. Sight unseen. I picked probably the best place to stop the hammock. It's just a real shame I'm pushing on because <laughs> I'm probably not gonna find anything else like this. Good thing I looked to my side, because <laughs> I would have missed that. So, uh, Cedar Grove Road, half a mile. Make it away. Man, they could have put one back on that trail that pointed this way. Now here's an interesting side after several miles. Wink. Eddieville, five miles. I doubt that. But who knows, maybe it is. This is that road I was talking about. This is 59.5 miles of the Road River Trail. I am continuing on. Uh, hold on. East Trig Trailhead is supposed to be 6.5 miles away, according to this sign. That is where my day four drop is. And uh, yeah, it's more than 6.5 miles away, I think. I calculated it. Of course, that was a mile and a half back to be eight. I don't know, maybe it is close. Uh, we'll see, but I'm not hiking all the way there. Uh, my goal was to get to here, but it's so early still that I'm just going to keep pushing on. And uh, when it gets close to four, I'll find a place and throw out my hammock. And uh, yeah, take it from there. So we got Sand Cave going somewhere. I'm going this way. A bit of a creek below me. Uh, 
I wouldn't trust the water down there. It looks pretty stagnant. But I'm walking along. Walking along. Singing my song. Now. I realize I haven't been filming much, but to be honest, there really isn't that much to film. The trail looks like this for a long way, ways. And it's pretty rocky. And I kind of need my trekking poles to manage so I don't stumble. So that's why I haven't been really taping a lot. I saw this sign. I got scared for a second. I thought I was, uh, uh, I thought I was on the wrong trail. Uh, Cedar Grove Rose, two, three quarter miles that way. East Trig, three and a quarter. Man, I hope that's not true. <laughs> that is my, that's my drop. If I'm three and a quarter miles away from my drop, then tomorrow's gonna be wacky. Okay, I'm a, probably about a mile out from a millstone. I uh, decided to take a break just because I was tired. It was 3.30. Um, sun's on its way down. And I figured I came into an area with some pretty decent trees. Um, Past a guy who was camping. He had a Jeep, uh, broke a belt, is waiting for his buddies to come tomorrow. I was like, I, for a split second, I thought I would see if... Hey, you want some company? He probably wants to be inside it because he had a camper, or like an RV as well. So he probably wasn't going to be in there. I didn't want to intrude on his RV. End of day three. So you know what that means. I didn't call for a ride out. And uh, that would mean I'm committed. Committed to the week. I am almost 63 miles into this, into the uh, River to River Trail at this point. Goreville is where I plan to do another uh, thing like today, where I stopped at uh, Shotgun Eddie's. I don't know if there's any restaurants in Goreville or anything like that, but there is a Dollar General. There is a convenience store, so I can go there. I can get some convenience store hot dogs. I don't care. And get some tea from there, whatever tea they have and uh, probably an extra bottle of water. Now they do have a cabin there. And I thought, I'm pretty dirty. I mean, I'm I'm surprised my feet are dirty as shit. My hands are dirty now. Uh, I just keep getting dirtier and dirtier. So uh, by the time I get to Goreville, I may, I may be like, can I have a cabin for the night? And just uh, take a shower, sleep indoors, you know. It does sound nice. What's It'll sound nice tomorrow morning when I'm waking up in the freezing ice cold. I'll be like, give me one night of warmth. But I've given myself, essentially, I mean, if I want it, I, I gave myself a short day tomorrow. Because um, I was supposed to be like eight miles, I think, away from my drop. From where I planned to stop. See, because I went over yesterday, too. So I went over yesterday, and I went over today. And, um, so I was closer to my drop yesterday or today. I was going to be close, way close to my drop today. I would be done super early tomorrow. So that's not going to happen. What's going to happen is I'm going to keep hiking. My day five drop is 10 miles from where I'm supposed to camp. So I'm going to cut down on that drastically by going further tomorrow, which was kind of also my idea. Cause I knew that 10 mile, uh, drop was going to be a real brutal one to get to. So I'm giving myself that I'm going to cut back, cut down on that. And after that, I may slow down. It all depends. So I'm going to cook one of my meals. I got to cook one of my meals. I've got two things of dehydrated uh, food, dehydrated meals or freeze dried meals or whatever. I have two things of beef jerky, two things of peanut butter and, uh, and tortillas. I'm swimming in food. I, I really, I'm just collecting it now. So I don't need to take it from every drop. So I think I'm just going to skip all the food 
for my next drop and uh, just grab the water. May change out my pants. Try and decide. I'm definitely changing out this shirt. Oh, it's so sweaty. Okay, I'm in my hammock now. My uh, ridge line's a little floppy. I knew the trees were too close. That's kind of a sign of the trees being too close is when you're, you have a floppy ridge line. But there's nothing I can do about that. Yeah, I almost didn't stop here. I got off trail and I'm like, okay, this looks like a good place. But then I started looking around like, oh my God, all the trees are either too far apart or too close. Or there's a bunch of debris. I mean, there was even uh, downed limbs under this and I had to like literally lift them up. It was like a whole tr like little tree and I had to like get another tree off of it and then hoist it up and then flip it around the other side and get to fall the other way because I didn't want it underneath here because if I get up in the middle of the night and step out, I don't want to step on a tree. I think I'm going to call Soraya since I have signal. I might as well. I didn't get to talk to her last night and it felt really crappy. Just being out of still out of service, out of contact with everything. It was just like when you're hiking all day by yourself, you know, you, you kind of you kind of need some connection in some form. I'll take what I can get, you know. I mean, I've had some humor human interaction today. The guy I passed a little bit ago, who I could literally probably hike back to and just chill with if I wanted to, but I'm up at the top of the hill, so hopefully I'm not going to be as cold when the sun drops. I'm going to pull more miles tomorrow than what I had. I'm definitely not stopping where I was supposed to because I want to. I want to cut down on the time on that 10 mile walk to my to drop five. Oh, I accidentally paused it because I was hovering my finger over it. <laughs> Whoops. I'm not in any real hurry to get off the trail anymore. Uh, like I said, once I make it made it past Sunday, it's just the rest of it's just going to be, you know, I'll, I'm pretty much acclimated to it now. So it's just kind of a routine to get through. And uh, as long as the scenery changes and I get some change up as you know, because Lusk Creek was just awful. I will never give up talking about how awful Lusk Creek was. I mean, this trip's going to be the most I've done consecutively, no matter how you slice it. It'll be the most I've ever hiked. It'll be the most I've hiked consecutively. It'll be the most I've hiked uh, by myself. So it's like three things all in one. And uh, it'll hold the crown for a very long time. <laughs> I don't intend to do the River to River Trail again. This is it. Like, it's a one and done sort of deal. Now, ask me at the end if I think I could through hike the River to River Trail. No. I am learning a lot on this trip, though. I will say that. Um, I've learned to walk with my mouth closed. It's hard to believe. And I realize that's contributing to my uh, feeling of, of being dehydrated. Because I think it's all just mind games. I think it's because my mouth gets so uh, cotton mouth that I'm tricked myself into believing that I'm, I'm dehydrated. And I'm really not. I'm just breathing out all my moisture. I had my mouth closed all day today. I like... I was even like forcing my lips shut and I just felt like I was in better control of it. I feel like even though I was starting to feel parched, it, I was, it wasn't getting out of control. You know, I, I wasn't getting afraid. No, don't hold me to that. Tomorrow might be a different day. Every day is going to be a different day, different experience. So we'll see what that, how it holds, but I'm going to do it tomorrow too and see how well it works out. And if it does, then that'll just be what I do from now on. And it'll help uh, combat that that fear that I have. So I'm going to cut this off because I really want to talk to Soraya and, uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that later.